So let me ask you this question. What are some of your favorite, most popular Bible stories? Shout them out, please. Samson, dang on the lion's den. Esther. Esther, love it, love it. Naomi. 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 Joseph. Joseph, I love it. So many, sir? Peter walking on water. I wish I could. There are so many amazing stories, and a thought that I wanna, that I wanna propose to you today is sometimes, I think it's so easy for us, especially myself including, to have some of these popular Bible stories so rehearsed in our mind that we don't, or maybe it's just me, I don't read what it says. I rehearse what I've been told. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's easy to sometimes overlook the things that we've been taught for years, especially when it comes to some of these popular stories, when it comes to the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going through the fire front, everybody knows the story, but understanding that the Bible is living word and can speak to us at any given point in time, and there's some, it can speak directly to our lives today, and it can speak to us differently tomorrow. It's the living word. And so today, I want to bring to you a, a passage of scripture that is probably very familiar to, ma- to the majority of us, a passage of David and Goliath. Okay, a, 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 lot of us know, a lot of us know that story. So David and Goliath, David was a little shepherd boy. Goliath was this over nine foot tall warrior who, from the Philistines who he was just, he was the man. Nobody wanted to fight him. Like he's better than Mayweather and McGregor put together with height, with Shaq's height. I mean like this is a man, right? Nobody wanted to mess with him. And David was a little shepherd boy. Like he, the Bible actually describes him as a boy, not even saying he's a man. And so David, he was, he was being a pizza delivery boy, a cheese pizza delivery boy to his brothers. Some of you are like, what? They had pizza in the Bible? David's dad asked him to deliver cheese to his brothers who were part of the Israeli army at this point in time. And so David goes out there while, while the Philistines and the Israel army are kind of going back and forth and Goliath is out there and nobody from the army of Israel is kind of combating Goliath. Everybody's too scared. Over nine foot tall, he's wearing over a hundred pounds of armor. That would wear me out just standing there, let alone having a fighter dude who, who's wearing it. So th- nobody was going against him. So David, as he got there, he heard some of the things that Goliath was saying and it's like, yo, do y'all hear him talking about our God? Like forget, forget like he's an army and like we're going against him. Like, okay, yeah, that's, that's one thing. But like this dude is like bad mouthing our God. Like it, if it wasn't enough in the natural, now he's, he's going against us spiritually now, which or it's turned something else up in, our, in my stomach. Does it turn something else up in y'all's stomach? It, it, it's one thing for a situation to happen in the natural, but then let something happen to us or let us hear somebody talking about our God and how defensive we can get. Like this pastor is like, oh, we're going to go off. I can't believe I just did that. We're going we're gonna to go. It, it just turns something else different inside of us. And so David went, to, David went to King Saul and said, listen, I will take care of this guy. King Saul was like, what? Okay, whatever. If you think you can, here's all this armor. Go ahead, go after it. And David, as he was walking, it almost made me think of like when I was a little kid playing Pop Warner football. You know, the little, little guys, they have the helmet and the shoulder pads and they can't walk. They just do this. That's how David was with, with these army, with all the armor that King Saul gave him. And he's like, no, nah, I need to take all this off because if I'm going to defeat Goliath, I need to do it my way. I need to do it my way. King Saul is, what are you talking about? Whatever, kid, if you want to go, go ahead and do it. We know the rest of the story. David goes out there knocks Goliath in the head with a stone, and then goes over with his own sword, brings his head, cuts his head off, brings it back to King Saul, and says, bam, how you like me now? Call me a boy now. And with that, what he wanted is King Saul said that any man who goes and who defeats Goliath will gain riches, will gain his daughter for marriage, as well as will not have to pay taxes. They'll be relieved of taxes. How many of y'all want to be relieved from taxes from going to, right? Now, mind you, that incentive was out for everybody and nobody took it except for David. Nobody took the incentive that was presented to everybody except for David. We all want to obtain victory in life, yeah? Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I don't like losing. I don't like taking L's. Pastor had us right after worship. 
I got victory, yes I do, I got victory, how about you? And we're battling back and forth. I thought me and Miss Tamika were about to swing hands. Like, we're going back and forth. Like, we, we don't like to lose, don't like to lose. So what I would like to bring to you guys tonight is just something that has helped me live my best life. Live my free life. Live my free life through Christ. Live my victorious life through Christ. Through Christ and, and using these principles. So point number one that I would like to, that I would like to give to you guys is, what David saw was a giant opportunity. David saw a giant opportunity. He, he, the, one of the most important things in order for us to live our best life is to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to us. Man, ha have you guys ever had an opportunity that you could have had, but then you just didn't? All right, I'm going to be vulnerable for a second. Please don't laugh at me. Mom, you might be hearing this for the first time. I'm sorry. When I was in Tennessee going to college, my second year, uh, it was in my second year, my sophomore year, I was taking a Western Civilizations course. Now, when it comes to history with football or history with sports, I'm amazing. When it comes to American history or any other kind of history that has nothing to do with sports, I'm terrible. I wasn't applying myself, I wasn't doing anything. And I'm, I got to the point where my grades were getting so bad in this class that I got to the point where I wasn't even paying attention in class. Little did I know that the teacher would say every single class, anybody who has trouble with this class, we have tutors for free that are available to you if you would like help with class. I never heard it. I ended up failing the class. Oh, I did. Oh, it was a big fat F. It's big, and it wasn't for faith, <laughs> and it wasn't for fun. <laughs> it was fail. It, it, it was big. It was big to the point where now what I could have done in, this, in, in one semester took me two semesters to do. Because I didn't seize the opportunity that was in front of me, it took me double the amount of time to get what was already mine, to go through what I already had to go through. What else could I have done? How much further could I, could I have excelled my life had I done it in the time span when I had? Yeah. Had I done it? I hear you. <laughs> in the story of David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, verse 32 says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. David understood that there was a big opportunity that was in, in front of him because opportunity gives us access to things that we currently don't have already, right? right? right. So, so uh, take, my, take my wife, for example. The first time we started dating, <laughs> I had the opportunity to take her on a date. Yes, I did. <laughs> that opportunity gave me access to a relationship that not a lot of people have. We have the opportunity to talk to God whenever we want to in our prayer life. That relationship is predicated on how much we use it. We, the opportunity is there for us. The door is open. He's given us access, but are we even using the access card that he has given us? Man, that is something that I struggle with, that I struggle with because, because one thing that I've learned is it's, it's just two different perspectives that you can have. You either have giant problems or giant opportunities yeah, yeah, yeah. giant problems man my Caleb I hear you talking but you have no idea where my health is right now it I, it sounds good I, I'll clap for you but but you don't know the relationship that I just got out of that I'm or maybe that I'm even still in, that it is just weighing me down and I can't get over it. There's, I feel like I'm running. I've been in my career for 10 years and I'm having a hard time promoting. I feel like I'm just running like a hamster, just going over the motions and over the motions and over the motions. If we're not careful, we'll see our giant opportunities as giant problems. Thankfully, we, I don't know about you, I like to see things that, like, that I need to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, thankfully, I've had parents who they have showed me how to parent. I have parents who have showed me how to have a successful marriage. How to, you, they say that your parents will teach you how to be married or how to parent, either what to do or what not to do, right? I like seeing the things of what to do. That way, there is no, if I mess up, it really is myself. 
Like, it wasn't left to interpretation. It wasn't, oh, dang, there was another option over there. I should just, nah, this is what you should do. Thankfully, David, at this point in time, he went through it. He, he was the epitome of taking advantage of a giant opportunity. Reading a book right now in my life group, by the way, life groups this fall have been amazing. All right, is anybody a part of a life group? There we go, there we go. Life groups have been amazing. And we're reading a book, and um, it, it's a leadership book. And one of the things that uh, John Maxwell is the author of it, one of the things that he says is, we are all born under the same sky, but we all have different horizons. We're born under the same sky. We are all given opportunity. The horizon that we see differently is the opportunities that we take advantage of. The opportunity, you want to see further into your future, start taking more advantage of opportunities. You want things to grow, you want your mind to expand, your vision to expand, start taking more opportunity on. Encourage opportunity to come to you. Don't see it as a giant problem. See it as giant opportunities as what David did because this is the thing. God being bigger than your giant is what makes it an opportunity. Listen, I am five foot seven. There's a lot of things that are bigger than me. My football coach who's here on the second row, Wayne Peace, he was, he's still bigger than me. And I remember growing up in seventh grade, he used to rough me up and punch me here and punch me there. On my physical side, if it was just left up to Caleb, there's a lot of things that would be way too big for me to handle. There's a lot of things. Walking into a marriage could be a, way too much to handle if I didn't have God on my side. Walk, working in ministry could be way too much to handle if I didn't have God on my side. God is the thing that takes our giant problems and turns it into a giant opportunity. Takes it into a giant opportunity. This is the other thing that we have to understand is opportunity brings conflict. I would pose to you that opportunity brings victorious conflict. Victorious conflict. So, so, so what does that mean? What does that mean? And in verse 45, it says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with the word and spirit and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David went straight for conflict. Mind you, J David was not a part of the army of Israel at this given point in time. It's not what he was doing. He was literally delivering something to his brothers and was going to go right back home got wind of what somebody was saying about his God and said, uh-uh, I'm not having that. You can't defile what I hold so precious and so dear. Right, right, right. David, at this point, he decided to, you know what, I, I don't have to, but that's an opportunity to, for me to prove how big my God is. Not what I have, not what, how good I am with a slingshot, how big my God is. You, I could have gone physical and left it alone, but since you wanted to bring God into it, let me just show you how big my God is. Let's go that route if that's really what you want to do. If you really want to do that, we can go there. David understood. He, he understood conflict is going to come with opportunity. Conflict comes to promote. Conflict comes to promote. You ever heard of growing pains? I never had much of them. I'm hoping they still come. <laughs> I'm praying. I have it. But one thing I do know is, man, sometimes when, when we go for growth or when it's a transition season in our lives or from high school to college or from one job to another or maybe, maybe for you if you have kids in here who are getting married, now you're transitioning and you're becoming another, you got another side of your family that's coming in. Or you have a kid who moved out of the house and it's, Oh, man, now my house is quiet now. This is what I wanted. I've been praying for my house to be quiet, but now it's like a little bit too quiet. So many different changes coming through. But you get rewarded for defeating something, right? Conflict comes to promote, but in order to get rewarded with the promotion, you have to have defeated something. Okay, well, well, well let's look at that because to defeat something means that you have been in a fight. 
To defeat it means you've been in a battle. To defeat it means that you have been in a war. Has anybody been in any kind of a fight, any kind of a battle, or any kind of a war in your life? Physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. Man, there, things come at us all left and, all, and left and right, left and right. But to defeat something, to get the victory, we have to go through something. This is the thing that I've learned about battles, is when you go into a battle, you're going to get banged up. You'll get cut. You'll get bruised. You're going to be sore. It, it might hurt a little bit. It might take some time to recover. But from playing sports, one thing I learned is I get that bruise and I get a W, I get a win, <laughs> it bruise me up. Whatever it takes to get the victory, because it, it's worse. Than, I remember playing high school football. Uh, the best, the best, the best wins were when we were the underdog. When we had been beat, and we had been beat, and we had been beat. And then you slowly just start seeing this creep back up, creep back up, creep back up. You ever heard, it's not the size of the dog in the fight that matters, but the size of the fight in the dog? Yeah. 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 Been beat, been beat. You, you feel like you've been torn down. You feel like your job is, is putting a ceiling over top of your head and, there, and there's no way for you to grow. I want to challenge you, keep going, keep pushing, keep going through that conflict. The conflict of, I don't know what to do, I'm struggling, am I, am I maxed out? Do I have any more capacity left? All these people at church, I'm hearing the promises of God that I'm an overcomer, that he wants me to live life and life more abundantly, but I feel like I'm plateaued, what am I doing? Keep wrestling with that conflict, don't lose. Because as we heard Pastor Scott say on Sunday morning, no Christian has ever lost a spiritual battle unless they gave up. There is power through your fight. There is power through your fight. There is power through your fight. There is power through the process of your fight. It's funny how we get to learn certain things. David. It was because of what he had been through in the past that he knew he could defeat Goliath with God's power. Yeah. He says it to King Saul that whenever a bear came, I killed him. Whenever a lion came and took my life, I killed it with my hands. He had already used what God had done and said, if he did it for me before, he'll do it for me again. He'll do it for me again. There's no reward without victory. There's no victory without a battle, but every battle is a conflict. It adds on each other. One thing that I am continuously telling myself is, Caleb, look at this thing deeper. Look at this thing deeper. It, it might seem like it's just surface level, and man, it's, it's like an iceberg. I, I see the top of it, and that's the thing that I'm going after, but man, what is underneath of it? What, what is the bigger problem? It, it, it's the conflict. It's the conflict but understanding that we need to go. So uh, I think it's time for us to change our perspective. Yeah. Okay? Are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. Are y'all with me? Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, I believe you. <laughs> Giants are just delivery boys. Yeah. Everybody say that with me. Giants are just delivery boys. Again, giants are just delivery boys. One more time. Giants are just delivery boys. Well, what are they delivering? God's promises. God's promises. If conflict produces a battle, and if in that battle we can see it as a big opportunity to come out victorious, then the only, what am I winning? David won three things. He won wealth, the king's daughter, and no taxes. What do I win? Y'all don't like to win things? Listen, one of my favorite things is getting a W on a, on a column or even, even the games on the iPhone. Like my wife and I, we'll go back and forth and play different pool games or different things, and I love just beating her. I love it. It, it just has something. And what do I win? I win bragging rights in that thing. In this, in this kind of a setting, what do we get to win? God's promises back on our life. Those things that we had forgotten about, those things that we used to declare continuously, but once conflict set in, we stopped. 
I believe it while my life is good, but as soon as something happens, or as pastor says, as soon as a little bit of hell comes in our life, then, then, it, then, it, doesn't, then it doesn't connect anymore. Then it doesn't connect anymore. The giants, the giants are just delivery boys. They're not dangerous at all. They're delivering God's promises. When we change our perspective, you either see it, we either see it as a giant problem, a giant opportunity. Opportunity brings God's promises. Problems bring dangerous giants. Which one do you want to buy into? As we sing today, we know what the outcome is. We know what the outcome is. Hallowed be your name. He is risen. We have the victory. We've already been saying it. Let's buy into it. Let's buy into it. That's why the Bible says we we don't want to just talk about faith, but let's walk in faith. Let's put action behind those things that we are continuously, that we're continuously saying. That's why some people, you might look around during worship time and you see some people getting into it. And I'll say some are worshiping because of the victory that they just received. But I don't know about you, but I really get into it when I need a victory. When, when I can't write a check to pay this one, or I can't talk my way out of this one, or there's no way that I can really confront this thing. And when we sing the song, this is how I fight my battles. When we start putting God's name, when we attach his name to it, it gives us a stronger punch to be able to handle all the conflict and battles that we're dealing with. Putting God in it, making God bigger than the situation that we're going through, allows us to receive his promises Matthew 24, verses 13 says, but the one who stands firm in the end will be saved. Guys, let's stand firm. Let's stand firm in the promises that God has for us. Let's stand firm in that every giant is just a delivery board bringing me what is mine, bringing me what God said is true. And if God was to say the same yesterday, today, and forever, then that means he could do it with me individually just as he can do it with you. Sometimes if we're not careful, we'll see conflict as difficulty rather than promotion. Think back to the thing that you had to work the hardest for. How much closer to your heart do you hold that one thing? Let's take that spiritually. Think about a time where you just needed God. God, I cannot do this. I have done all that I can. It, you're the only one who can make this change. When you see God touch that side of you, truly believing, seeing God touch that side of you, man, there is something that rises up on the inside of you that there is nothing, nobody could debate it. No school can teach me any different kind of theology. I don't know about you. I don't know what you've heard, but I know what I've experienced. And can nobody tell me what I have experienced? God wants, God wants supernatural experiences with us. And this is how we get it, through taking these opportunities because he's right there all along the way. So one, we have to understand the opportunities there too. Understand that conflict is going to be there, but it's victorious conflict. And then point number three is once we get the victory through the conflict, we need to walk in extreme gratitude. Extreme gratitude. Why is extreme gratitude so important? Because through victories, something that I learned and something that I struggled with, heavy, is that you have one of two options to go when you win something, arrogant or humble. Arrogance or humility. Which one are we going to choose? Arrogance put me at the front end. Humility, gratefulness, puts God at the front end. Humility puts God at the front end. And so the struggles we achieve make it so, the success is so much more enjoyable when you overcome them. I remember, man, there, there was one game. We were playing the game. I played for Lakeland Christian, and we were playing Frostproof. And it was a Monday night. We had a game on Friday. We won. We played on Monday because there was a three-way tie to see who was going to go to the playoffs. And that game was literally do or die for the season. I love those. I love those high-pressure moments. Why? Because I understand that it's an opportunity to see what am I made of. 
What, what, can, what can happen? What can happen? What, what, it, am I a fighter on the inside? Some of us need to get our fight back on with God. As pastor did a couple weeks ago, you gotta start gritting back at it. This is the thing. This, well, we're, we're laughing, but this is the thing. There are certain times, listen, it, it's funny until it hits home. Because there's some things that I will fight for. Like you, you take, you hit me, ah, that sucks. You hit my wife, let's get it on. Okay, now somebody's trying to tell me, or my body, my mind, my heart sometimes, that my heart is deceitful, trying to tell me that, man, God said that the promises are yours if you take a hold of them, but, but, but the promises just aren't happening. And so, and so I'm in this struggle, I'm in this battle. Time for my spirit man to rise up and say, uh-uh. We're not playing, we're not wavering one way or the other. If God said it to be true, then it is true because his word never returns void. His word never returns void. David knew more than anybody how much the victory that he received over Goliath was a God victory more than a David victory. A boy, a man an average sized boy, an over nine foot man, a slingshot with a huge sword. Doesn't add up, a warrior, a shepherd. Doesn't add up. God is no respecter of persons. He don't care where you came from. He don't care what your history is. He doesn't care what you did last night. If he wants to use you, and if we're just open and say, God, I recognize the opportunity that you're giving me, the opportunity of life change, the opportunity of prosperity, the opportunity of health, the opportunity of all the promises that you've given me, then God, here I am, use it. Watch what God happens. Watch what God does in your life. Just watch. It's amazing. Gratitude keeps my mind on Christ. While arrogance, if we're not careful, and I'm right there, arrogance can make my mind just go to myself. Psalms 136, verse 26 says, Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his loving kindness endures forever. What does that verse tell me, personally? That I will always have something to be grateful for. I will always be able to praise God through, through, through anything that's happening. If he were to not do another blessing in my life, God, I praise you. God, I love you. That's why I love the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They say, even if he does not save us from this fiery furnace, to God be the glory, I will still stand firm. That kind of fight, that kind of grit to where, hey, I trust you, and no matter what you do, I understand that you are a God that is bigger than any problem that I'm going through. Whether it's fine, whether it's in your family, whether it's at your job, whether it's in your bank account, whether it's in your body physically, whatever it is, God understand that he is bigger than anything that we're going through. We can rest assured that he will take care of anything, and he, and he wants to. He wants to be there. That is the best thing ever. That is the greatest thing. And as I close, I want to show you guys that these, these three points, opportunity, conflict, and gratitude, it's a cycle. It's a cycle because once we start seeing giants as opportunity, then we can see conflict as a means of promotion, right, which will then allow gratitude to come into our hearts, into our minds. Gratitude is the road to our next opportunity. If you're not grateful for what you've come from, then why would you get another chance? Right? So, so, so I take on the mindset. I take on the mindset that, okay, this is a big opportunity. I'm going after that. And, yeah, there's going to be conflicts, but that, that conflict that gi- is just my delivery boy. That giant is just my delivery boy coming to bring me what is mine, what God said is mine. God can use your enemies to be your biggest blessing. That thing that's on the inside of you that the doctors say they have no idea what it is can be one of your biggest blessings. Let's not limit God's potential for the things that he can do. He is all-powerful, and thankfully, he is not limited to our circumstances. He's not limited by our limitations. Thank God he fills the voids in my head. He fills the void. I love it. I love, I love. The Bible says, 
bit. I believe, but help my unbelief. God, I believe in you. I believe that there's opportunities in front of me. I believe that you're bringing a, del- a giant delivery board for my giant promise that you've already get- promised me. But God, I'm having such a hard time believing it. Having such a hard time believing it. Going it, and once we actually receive it, God, I'm just so grateful. Nobody could have done this. Nobody could have given me eternal life the way you did. Nobody could give me mercy. Nobody could give me grace. Nobody could forgive me for my sins indefinitely. Nobody can do that but God. Man, when we change our heart to a heart, an attitude, an attitude of gratitude, the way we walk changes. The way we talk changes. Speaking positivity. Speaking positivity. Everywhere my foot touches will be mine. Praying over your kids, it'll pray different. Oh, you better believe I'm already praying over my kid, and my wife isn't even pregnant yet. (laughs) Listen, you're laughing, but I'm serious because I know what it is to grow up in today's culture that's only getting worse. Thank God we have the blend, the youth group here, that is teaching our kids young, at a young age, man, believe in the promises of God, believe in the promises of God. At least they will have something to refer back to of, man, God did do that for me. Man, when we're able to change our attitude and our perspective to gratitude, it's an amazing thing that can happen. I'd like to ask everybody to stand up to your feet. And I want to pray with you guys tonight. Not for you, because I need this prayer too. I need this prayer every day. See big opportunities. Believing that God is bringing giant delivery boys to your front door and walking in gratitude are daily and sometimes hourly decisions that we have to make. I wish there was a way that I could just say it on Monday and it go all the way through like uh, clockwork until the very next day or to the very next week. It doesn't happen that way. It's daily decisions. So I wanna pray for two groups of people. First, I, w- I want to pray for those who feel like they need a new perspective. Man, God, I, there's some things that are going on in my life, and I, and I don't see them as, as giant blessings. I don't see them as, as giant opportunities. I just see them as giant problems. God, help change my mind. Help change my perspective. Help me see things the way that you see things and not be limited to my own vision. Open my eyes to what you have in store for me. Father God, we love you so much and we are so grateful. We are so grateful that your supernatural hand is all over each and every one of our lives, Father. And for each person who's, who's praying this prayer and who's fighting this battle of, man, God, I, I know you're a big God, but this is such a big problem that I'm dealing with. Father God, I pray that you come and you reveal yourself to them like you've never had. Father God, I pray that tonight on the, in November in 2018 that they can say that they had such an encounter with God that changed their perspective forever for all of life, Father God. In Jesus' name. And I want to pray for one other group of people. People who have conflict with battling. You have conflict with conflict. It's like, man, I... I get that there's growing pains and I get that there's things that are kind of hard that that I'm going to have to go through, but I'm just having a hard time doing it. Is that anybody in this room? That's me. If I could, I'd put both legs up and both hands. I want to pray for you guys. Father, I pray for your peace. Your peace, it it doesn't make any sense to us in the scenarios that we're going through, Father God. Those things that, man, I am losing my mind. I'm not able to sleep. I'm not eating. My relationships are going sideways. I'm not even myself anymore. Father God, I pray for peace over the situations. Father God, I pray. I pray that as these people who are dealing with this conflict, Father God, that they understand that you are the supplier. That you are not coming to destroy, Father God, but you are coming to promote. Father God, that you want what is best for us. And Father God, that your promises are true. Your word does not return void. If we believe in you, 
then it is ours. And Father God, tonight that's what we're doing, that's what we're saying. Lord, we are making you bigger than any problem that we're having. We're making you bigger than any conflict that we're having in our mind, Father God. Believing you to take control of this situation and see it all the way through. Because you are not a God who does things halfway, but you only do things to completion. Father God, as we chase you, I love that the Bible says that as we draw near to you, you draw even nearer to us. So Father God, tonight, I pray that you draw near to all of us as we pray. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, amen, amen.